of Ghana's forest as a pair of lungs or kidneys, cleaning our air and water, regulating rainfall, sunshine and serving as a buffer against natural disasters. The country's kidneys and lungs are currently being attacked and perforated at a faster rate by illegal mining. Seven of Ghana's 16 regions have been affected by illegal mining activities. 34 of the country's 288 forest reserves have been affected with an estimated destruction of 4,726 hectares, larger than twice the land size of Ashanti region, according to the Forestry Commission. Whilst the country begs for funds to slow down the destruction of its carbon filters, Parliament has amended environmental laws to open up existing protected and production forests for more mining. Let's take a journey to the Apamprama Forest Reserve. The Apamprama Forest Reserve is one of four forest reserves within the Amansia Central and Amansia South administrative districts of the Ashanti region. The reserve was selected in 1937 and later demarcated in 1938. Ownership is vested in the Bekwai, Rempi and Denyase Paramounties. It derives its name from the Apamprama River which takes its source from the Odumasa portion of the reserve and flows into the Oda River. It covers a total area of 34.7 km square with 21 admitted farms. For years, it has been the source of non-timber forest products like pestles, snails, kapok, sponge, spices, canes, bamboo and rattan, medicinal plants and incense. It is also home to grass cutters, dukes, monkeys, antelopes, squirrels and rats. The Apamprama Forest Reserve is surrounded by five major communities Kobro, Abuyakwa, Obenenebing, Aponapong, Ankam, Mansuafede, and Musikrum. As of 2018, Apamprama served the timber needs of about eight timber firms legally recognized as felon rights holders of the production forest. This is the Kobro community, an old town which sits deep within the Apamprama Forest Reserve. Residents still have fresh memories of how the destruction of the Kobro section of the reserve started in 2018. First of all, don't buy that and we... One by one, they tell me of how the late chief executive of the Forestry Commission, Sir John, in 2018 convinced the townsfolk that the government was undertaking a reclamation exercise in the forest. Initially, they said they were covering pits, but then they started building settlements. Ah, we wondered why they were setting up shelters if they were just covering pits. Then a number of machines were brought in, so we mobilized to demonstrate. But Sir John came in and assured us they were just planting trees. But after a month when we went back, the forest was crawling a lot of miners. That began a series of events that marked the woes and destruction of a once beautiful natural forest. A forest entry permit was granted to Unique Star Point Company Limited to carry out reclamation activities on some portions of the forest reserve in November 2017. 
In the same year, a forest entry permit was granted to Heritage Imperial Company Limited to conduct prospecting activities in December 2017. Unique Star Point Company Limited and Heritage Imperial Company Limited belong to Emmanuel Donald Intua and Reynold Squabby. Contrary to mining regulations, what was supposed to be prospecting and reclamation of the Apamprama Forest Reserve turned out to be active mining of the reserve with over 18 excavators and a number of bulldozers. <laughs> The forest became a no-go area. We could not enter the forest. They mounted huge barriers. They brought in bodyguards. I used to drive some miners into the forest. We had to endure drills from the military. We concluded that these people were sent from the top. The illegal activity in the Cobra section of the Apamprama Forest Reserve went on for months under the watch of the Forestry Commission. So this devastation went on and the Apraman Forest Reserve sites are right here. The Forestry Commission says it had no evil, it did not see anybody bringing in heavy equipment. This has lasted for close to a year. No government official got wind of it or nobody was prepared to even face them. After failed attempts by Operation Vanguard and other security agencies to stop the illegality, the Interministerial Tax Force on Illegal Mining moved in to stop the pillaging of the forest. The law does not allow the use of heavy F-moving equipment in prospecting in forest areas, but Imperial Heritage Mining Limited in 2018 was actively mining the reserve with about 30 excavators using a prospecting license. Tax Force Commander W1 Isaac Nyako is overwhelmed by the wanton destruction of forest. In this deal, this is the largest. In fact, I don't even know how to start and how to end. I'm even shocked seeing the ground like this. The largest, the largest so far at this very site. The company had destroyed a large part of the forest under prospecting, a crime they were never punished for. Nanayao Enin is the chief of Cobro. He indicates Imperial Heritage came back to mine in the forest after it was driven out. Sir John met the whole community and told us they were doing reclamation. But in the end, when they mined and Ajikum burnt his machines, he came back to mine in the forest. The soldiers and the Forestry Commission know he came back. In 2021, Imperial Heritage was back mining in the Odaho section of the Apamprama Forest Reserve, this time with a mining lease. This was at the time when the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Samuel Abujinapo, had declared forest reserves and water bodies red zones and restricted areas where no mining should be allowed to take place. We are pursuing that strongly. The minister also instructed the Forestry Commission to desist from issuing forest entry permits for purposes of mineral prospecting or mining in any forest reserve. But in 2021, my team met Imperial Heritage Mining Limited and its Chinese miners mining the Odaho section of the Apamprama Forest Reserve under the protection of over 30 fully armed military men. After our expose of the illegality in 2021, the military personnel were withdrawn. But authorities are yet to make public findings on who assigned them. The chief of Kobro, Nanayao Enin, narrates how he and his elders were treated when they confronted military men who besieged the forest to protect other miners in 2022. 
On Monday, I, my linguist and some of my elders took a trip deep into the forest. We met a barrier manned by armed soldiers. This was in 2022. I introduced myself as the chief of Cobro and caretaker of the forest for Bekwai Paramountsi. I told them we've noticed some activity in the forest. We demanded to see their documents so we could inform the king of their presence. The soldier called the owner of the mining site on phone and told him of our presence. His boss told him to ask us whether the forest is owned by the government or the people of Kobro. We couldn't challenge the armed soldiers, so we left. Since then, other illegal miners have joined the fray. Now look at this. You can drive miles of devastation caused to this reserve. The once green Apamprama Forest Reserve has been largely reduced to a wasteland. Valuable tree and animal species are all gone. Maybe this is the only green that is still active. But valuable trees, the flora and fauna, animals, the river or that which lies dirty here, they are all gone. The Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources has, through the agency of the Forestry Commission, with the assistance of the military, made the effort to cordon off all 294 sites of forest reserves in the country and rid them of illegal mining. So while the president was giving this assurance, illegal miners were pillaging the Apamprama Forest Reserve. Madam, what's your friend say? Madam Emilia. Emilia, no, no, no. This miner tells us he works for one Emilia, who we later learned is a politician. They are not working today because a military swoop on the area has affected them. Their equipment have been seized. We found her equipment parked inside Cobra Town. The youth are not happy. Some of them have had their machines bent in another military operation. When the soldiers came, they met one of our excavators on the road and they bent it. These equipment belong to Mama Emilia's group. She's a former women's organizer for MPP at Jacobo. We don't know why they did not burn her equipment. These excavators are part of 16 equipment bent by personnel from the Central Command of the Ghana Armed Forces in Kumasi on 7th June 2023. This move is part of an operation by the Forestry Commission to rid the Apamprama Forest Reserve of illegal miners to pave the way for a pilot reclamation exercise. Brigadier General Ajeman Prempe is the general officer commanding the Central Command. His reaction when he first saw the degradation caused to the Apamprama Forest Reserve by irresponsible miners. I felt shocked. I felt worried. I felt people were heartless. I felt they were not getting in. And I just say that these are people that we need to ensure that they don't come around here anymore. Because I felt that generations behind have been robbed of something great. 16 excavators have been bent under his watch and a number of excavators seized and parked at the Central Command 4th Battalion grounds in Kumasi. Once you find it in the forest, we burn. Once you find it along the riverside, we burn. Once you find it in an area that is grey where the individual has been given the right to mine, we collect the machines and bring them to the uh, command headquarters for you to come and justify with your documents if indeed you have the right to mine in the area. So the forest is a no-go and it has been defined that it is an illegal area for anybody to mine. Brigadier General Ajeman speaks of his resolve to protect what remains of the Apamprama Forest Reserve. When we look at the, uh, the environmental sustainability cycle, you know, 
once you are destroying more than you can you, you, you can replant or you can build, it means that it is not sustainable. So what they are doing is not making this, uh, the environment sustainable because they are just destroying it and they are not going to build them back. So we want to ensure that we get these people out and then government agencies that are prepared to come and do reclamation can come and do that. Even as he continues his onslaught on illegal mining in what is left of the Apamprama, we found Chinese miners and their Ghanaian collaborators have moved their equipment to this school, waiting for an opportunity to move in. Some indigents of Odaho, like Emmanuel Buama, are not happy with the destruction of the forest, but they say they are helpless. We were adamant we would not allow them to destroy the forest. Soldiers, heavily built men, mounted a barrier at a group home and subjected us to severe beatings. We were overpowered. Because of the mining in the forest, all cocoa and other farms close to the forest were destroyed. When you use the polluted water on the cocoa, they wetter. All our crops are not doing well due to the contamination of the soil. There is a sharp contrast to how the Forestry Commission handles illegal miners and the local farmers who want a piece of the forest land to farm. Kwame in Japan is a native of Kobro. He is growing kokoyam and plantain at the edge of what remains of the forest. His farming activity will not destroy the land, but he is allowed to farm here only on one condition. To put these pegs at measured intervals to plant trees that will grow with his crops. He can only harvest once and the trees will take over. The forestry officials show us the intervals at which we peg the trees. They then bring us seedlings to plant. Their tree species grow rapidly. If he doesn't do this, forest inspectors will destroy his farm. If they find trees planted amidst the crops, you are safe. If they find out you have not planted the tree amidst your crops, they will destroy your farm. But a few meters from his farm, illegal miners are allowed to destroy the forest, vegetation, trees, water and the land permanently. Entities like Imperial Heritage Mining Limited violated environmental laws in 2018 when they mined the forest with prospecting licenses without any consequence. State agencies, including the Forestry Commission, have looked on for this large tract of forest to be destroyed permanently for a period of about four years. Global Forest Watch data indicates that between 2001 and 2021, trees sitting on 1.41 million hectares of land were destroyed across Ghana. The destruction of tree cover is equivalent to about half the size of the entire Ashanti region, which is about 2.4 million hectares. This notwithstanding, Ghana has received $4,862,280 from the World Bank for reducing 972,456 tons of carbon emissions for the first monitoring period from June to December 2019. Ghana is eligible to receive up to uh, 50 million dollars for 10 million tons of carbon dioxide emissions reduced by end of uh, 2024. Even though we celebrate this milestone today, Ghana's forest resources continue to face pressures from agricultural expansion, unsustainable logging, excessive wood harvesting for charcoal production and firewood, illegal mining, wildfires, and poaching. So now it is the ball is now called working with the community, the chiefs and people to be able to improve upon the, uh, the landscape. In the midst of all this destruction and the billions of dollars in gold taken from this area, communities remain the poorest. 
they brought in a transformer and wired the town so we thought we would be connected in about a year benenebin community for instance is yet to be connected to the national electricity grid it has been reduced to poor infrastructure and a deprived community with few opportunities their farmlands are gone forests degraded water sources polluted and the attendant change in climatic conditions have affected farming it is the forest that gives farmers in this area rain to farm but now if god doesn't intervene we will not have the rains to grow our crops the indigents of benenebin share their dilemma We've not gained anything. Look at our schools, toilets, and our town. We are helpless. When they come, they promise a lot of things, but they don't fulfill these promises. If the leaders of this town had insisted they will not allow the machines to enter the forest, they couldn't have destroyed the forest. Meanwhile, Ghana has secured a $103 million World Bank loan to, among others, restore cocoa lands, engage the restoration of polluted water resources, and reclaim degraded forest lands, including the Apamprama Forest Reserve. Just before airing this report, we decided to go back to the Apamprama to gauge the situation there. We found many Chinese miners are back to mine in the forest. Some have hit the ground mining, while others have set up camp to continue mining in a forest built for reclamation. You can see fresh excavators, about eight drums of diesel ready to work. Equipment here and there, you can see the generators and the washing plants. The illegal miners are back. We spotted active mining in areas where the military recently seized and burnt equipment. We were told by sources powerful people in government have brokered deals for these Chinese to mine where others have had their equipment bent. I happen to witness Yoda is a journalist who has been monitoring events in the Apamprama Forest Reserve. He has witnessed the selective justice adopted by the forest guards in protecting this reserve. I was going to interview this illegal manners. One of them was ready to speak to me. And then we saw the vehicle of the forestry, that's the rapid response unit of the Forest Commission, moving to the site. They came and then they took their generators, their pumping machines, and even their motorbikes. And they set fire on all these items but then few meters few meters from where they were burning these items was an excavator digging so i asked the officer so say why are you chasing this illegal man is here by leaving this excavator digging for the same people who are also doing the illegal mining then he told me that oh for them they are working in the off reserve so, so that's why they are not going there. But before he told me that, one of them who spoke to me when they're quiet told me that the issue is political. So when they come into the forest, they can't arrest whoever they want to arrest. The DCE or the MP will have to give them the order as to who they can arrest. So it tells me that clearly there is, there is a political hand or a big hand somewhere that is manipulating this whole thing. Many of these farmers have had their source of livelihood destroyed by the mining of this forest. But their taxes will pay for the $103 million contracted to reclaim the devastation. Environmental conservation organization Arocha Ghana has a problem with that. Sometimes I ask myself why does even the World Bank even support such initiatives or push those initiatives before us. Daryl Bosu is Deputy National Director. Business persons have been given concessions. They've gone into our forest reserves, into our landscape, 
mined it for gold, traded it, kept the profit for themselves. And the public is going to pay for a loan that is now going to be used to reclaim the mess of some businesses. It's not fair. And there's no way anyone, and even the World Bank, should support such an initiative. As the president leads the annual Green Ghana initiative of planting trees across Ghana, hundreds of trees are being felled and forests pillaged across the country by illegal miners for gold. Darrell describes it as a charade. If you look at the logic of planting several millions of trees in a particular day, and then taking a whole year, the rest of the year, to destroy many other forest reserves, old existing forest reserves that provide significant biodiversity services, ecosystems like water provision and all of that, you ask yourself really, is this logical? So we believe it is, it is just a charade in terms of all the things that is said on podiums and, and also the so-called commitment of the president. Dr. Stephen Apiatechi is an environmental planning expert and a senior lecturer with the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. He is worried about the rate at which Ghana is depleting its forests through illegal mining. A leader can destroy the economy. He can be pardoned. But when a leader destroys the natural resources, they de destroy the very existence of its citizenry, including future generations. And this is how serious Ghana's state is. But the question is, didn't the colonial masters knew that there was gold in these forest reserves? Didn't they know that there were bauxite in these forest reserves? Why did they leave it there? And that puts serious questions on our political system. If the colonial masters were criticized, save these resources. If the lives of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah save these resources, how come our fourth republic that we pride ourselves as being a democracy is the one destroying these resources. We should put questions on that. So the extent of discussion, not only for rest but water body, is alarming. It doesn't look good for the nation. Even as the country reels under the current devastation of forest, Parliament has amended the country's environmental guidelines to open up both protected and production forest for mining. Darrell Bosu describes the passage of LI 2462 in 2022 as an indication the government intends to continue to mine the country's forest reserves. Right after seeing the LI, we decided to go onto the Mincom uh, repository of concession, the database, and we realized that one GSBA, Boyne Tunnel, had already been given out for mining and this was right after that ally was passed what we don't know is whether the presidential approval that is required before these forest reserves a gsba is says has been done and it's something that i believe that we still need to continue and identify so for us we believe that this law actually demonstrates to us that the government has no intention to stop assessing our forest reserves for mining. It looks like they are really on a course of accelerated mining and nothing is going to stop them. For now, Brigadier General Ajiman Prempe and his men say they are bent on protecting what is left of their Pamprama Forest Reserve. We will have to take the fight to them and ensure that they don't get what they want, but we are able to leave what belongs to it. Ghana now, Ghana tomorrow, and Ghana in the future. Whatever action is taken today on the preservation of these natural resources, it will affect the people we love positively or negatively now or in the future. But in the meantime, the Apamprama Forest Reserve is under siege. And the time to act is now.